Hello, and welcome to Agrosive Physics. Today is day 19, and what we're going to do is explore the acceleration versus time graph. Now, acceleration versus time graphs are not going to be as exciting as the velocity versus time, because the velocity versus time graph is the most versatile one we can use. We can find the slope of the velocity versus time and get the acceleration. We can find the area of the velocity versus time and get displacement. So, the acceleration versus time graph is kind of like our dead end. It's the end of the journey for our position functions because we cannot find the slope of the acceleration versus time. 99% of the time it's going to represent zero or a value that is constant because what's going to happen is most of our accelerations are uniform. Well uniform means they're constant. So what is almost every graph going to look like for acceleration versus time? You got it. It's going to be a flat line. Now, if we're accelerating in a positive direction, it'll be a flat line above the axis. If we have no acceleration or we have a constant velocity, it'll be a flat line of zero. If we have negative acceleration, which will be most of the problems we deal with free fall or objects falling near the surface of the moon, for example, anything falling in the Earth's gravitational pull, it will be negative. It will be below the axis and it'll be a flat line at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So most of our acceleration versus time graph, although represent acceleration versus time, are going to be fairly easy to observe and not yield too much information. If we look at it quickly, we'll know if it has a positive, a zero, or a negative acceleration. But other than that, there's only one math tool that we can use to analyze it. And that math tool is going to be the area. So when we deal with acceleration versus time, what we can do is find the area of 99% of the time, the rectangle. Because if we have a flat line, the shape underneath is going to represent the area of the acceleration, and that's going to be a rectangle. Now the area is going to be base, which is time, times height, which is change in velocity. Well, if we think about it, acceleration was velocity over time. If we rearrange that, what we'll find is that velocity, or accelerate, I'm sorry, acceleration times time will yield change in velocity. So the area of the acceleration time graph can tell me how much the, the velocity has changed during the problem. Most of the time it's going to be, like I said, a rectangle, so it'll just be base times height. That could be asked on an assessment, but most of the time in order to test your physics knowledge, the choice is made to use a velocity versus time graph or to test your ver your knowledge of drawing tangents a curved displacement graph but since we deal with uniform acceleration most often you're going to have a situation where most of the time the graph is going to be flat now if we do that like I said the area gets us the change in velocity now the area is something that we haven't talked about in terms of calculus. We talked about the derivative in order to get from displacement to velocity and from velocity to acceleration. But there's another calculus term that may be useful for some of us. And those of us who are in calculus now or will take calculus later will hear of the integral. The integral is a way to find the area of a oddly shaped graph. Now not every graph is going to be pretty. Not every graph is going to be uniform. Not every object in the real world has uniform acceleration. So what we'll have is curves. We'll have curves that are not constant. Now what we can do is integrate and that will allow us to find the area under the curve, whatever shape that happens to be. So if we're doing data collection in, in the lab and we use a real object that may not um, accelerate in a uniform manner, we could use calculus in order to analyze it. Now many of the tools that you'll use can do calculus even, you do, even, even if you don't know what calculus is or don't know how to do the integration or the derivative, but if you already know it, you'll be able to use those tools to make it um, quicker for you. Now at this point, the acceleration versus time graph is really uh, simple. We're going to do uniform accelerations most of the time. They're going to be flat lines and all we can do is find the area. So you'll be dealing with displacement versus time and velocity versus time most often, but 
make sure you don't neglect the fact that acceleration versus time graphs can be useful. And in order to do that, you can use the area. Now what's important is we've dealt with displacement versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. And for, to go from displacement to velocity to acceleration, you find the slope. To go from acceleration back to velocity back to displacement, you find the area. Now, before we used to use S for displacement. So S, V, and A were the three graphs. We use D now. But those of us who may still use S for displacement, or textbooks that may use S for displacement, there's an easy mnemonic to remember in order to know what math tool to use when you're dealing with graphs. And the mnemonic is SVAVS. SVA AVS, SVA AVS. In order to move down the chart from S to V to A, or S being displacement to velocity acceleration, you use the S tool, which is slope. So SVA starts with S, so you use the slope to go from displacement to velocity to acceleration. On the other hand, to go AVS back up, you do the area. So if you use S for displacement, you can actually remember this mnemonic, SVA AVS, in order to determine whether or not to use the slope or the area. If you have a displacement graph and you want to find the velocity, use the slope, SVA. If you have the velocity and you want to find the acceleration, slope, you're moving down the graph. If you go back up the graph, you're going from A to V to D or S, AVS. It just doesn't sound as right going DVA, Avd. So if you use S for displacement, you can remember SVA AVS to make your life easier. It's not too much to remember, but for some of us, we have so much crammed in our brains that there's not a lot of room for new things to remember. So SVA AVS might help. And what we have here is four different curves all representing different types of acceleration. Remember, any curve that you have with displacement versus time is going to represent accelerated motion. Now these, although they're all curves, represent different types of acceleration. Now if we look, we can use the cup test, place our hand along the curves for the first two, and that will show, two on the left that is, that the accelerations are positive for each. It holds up to the cup test. On the other side, on the right, we have two negative values. If you were to place your hand on the curves, water would fall right out. Water would move downward out of your hands. You wouldn't be able to drink the water. So those represent negative accelerations. Now in this case, here, in the upper left, this shows an object going from rest to a positive velocity. And if we drew tangent lines, I'll just kind of draw them briefly by hand, not the best tangents ever. But if I do so, you'll see that the slope is getting bigger over time. Another way I do this is I'll take a ruler and I'll place it along the curve and just trace the curve. It kind of kind of touch the graph outside only once as I move along the curve. So in this case I would curve it like that. Now what is that showing me in terms of the uh, slope? Well, We start off with a steep slope at the beginning and a zero slope effectively at the end. This has a negative um, initial velocity and then it slows down. Now think about it. If it's slowing down that means the direction, which is always moving in the negative direction, it's moving towards the origin each time, and the acceleration is always positive, that's going to represent slowing down. As opposed to the direction on this one, which was always away from the origin, combining it with a positive acceleration, it speeds up. So you have a speed up here, a slow down here, and in this case, it speeds up, but it moves faster in a negative direction. In this case, it slows down, 
and it slows down in the uh, positive direction because it's moving away from the origin and this one's moving towards the origin. So just by looking at four different curves, we can tell exactly what type of acceleration we have. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it speeding up? Is it slowing down? Is it moving faster at the end or is it moving slower at the end of the problem? Now these of course are all single segment graphs. Um, real objects would have more complexity to them. But if we can understand the single segments, we can put together all the single segment graphs together and ultimately get um, a, a situation where we describe the motion of an entire trip for an object and understand every aspect of that trip in minute detail. No numbers, just qualitative for now, but if numbers were involved, we could find slopes and areas if we needed to. But it's important to realize that you can understand what an object's doing without numbers. We don't always need numbers. Numbers sometimes are, act as a crutch for us. It's important to understand the concepts first, and then we can use the math to better our understanding. But at this point, it's important to realize that these objects are all doing different things, although they're all curved lines.